Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of Betrayal of the Mountains of Madness. Today we're on Scenario 4, Frostbound Cenotaph. The Barsmeyer Falcon base camp that you have been searching for all this time finally lies before you. It is a sturdy complex, far more permanent than the tents and pits of the Taco expedition you have left behind. Four large, intentionally sunken buildings lie at the four corners of a square, with submerged tunnels cutting through the snow between them. Two years ago, half the expedition were wiped out by something that was never reported or recorded by the survivors. The base was abandoned then, and although parts of the connecting tunnels have collapsed, from the outside it looks to be in good shape. Somewhere inside there must be some clue or record of what happened here. Check the campaign log. If the Germans recovered pieces of evidence, they recovered no evidence, I believe. Why is Spotify open? Why is this new tab open? Oh, I know why that's open. I'm just dumb. Oh my god, did I just close chat? No, thank god. Oh, that's probably why freaking Our thing was so mad. Okay, sorry everybody. They have no evidence. Uh, there is no obvious entrance that isn't frozen over, but you're able to dig your way through the flimsy wall of the north tunnel and begin your investigation there. Set up instructions, tabletop version I've done, and then check the campaign log if they recovered pieces of evidence. We do one for each effect. Flipping and replacing. Effects in this scenario may require you to flip or replace cards. Treat these in the same way. When a card is flipped or replaced, what happens depends on whether the type of card changes. If the type remains the same, for example, an enemy that flips to or is replaced by an enemy, the card does not enter or leave play, it simply remains in play. Any tokens or attachments remain on the new card. And the state of the card remains unchanged. Easy. If the type changes, the, uh, for example, an enemy that flips over is replaced by a story asset, the old card counts as leaving play and the new card counts as entering play. Any tokens or attachments are removed. The state of the card is as if it was just under play, with the exception that if it enters play in the location the old card was in, if there was one. Cards that cannot leave play can still be flipped, even though that could cause the card to leave play through the type changing. Okay. Let's uh, do this. At the east end of the tunnel, you notice a large rat, or dog, pressed up against the metal door. On closer inspection, its head is actually pressed flat against the surface, as if it had melted against it. <clears throat> the whole creature is bizarrely misshapen, and it's pitch black. Featureless body is completely motionless. Although it is frozen still, something about it is grotes grotesquely offensive to the senses. A crawling sensation warns you to hurry. Stygian enemies enter play exhausted. They can already be affected by player cards, be damaged, be engaged, or be moved. All of it. Six Doom advances. Otherwise, the camp is as silent as a mausoleum. Narrow, icy tunnels stretch off into the darkness, leading to more frozen rooms. There is no obvious sign of what happened, and there are no bodies. Each oil lamp's location gains as a lightning bolt during your turn spawn player lamps on this location. As an action, you can remove one lamp from this location, and you may spend one resource to remove one additional lamp from this location. <clears throat> we start on this location. A tunnel approximately 80 feet in length runs from east to west across the north side of the base. The walls and floors seem to have been constructed from packing crates, which have since frosted over. Oil lamps intermittently line the walls to the west, but to the east all the lamps have been smashed. And though there is no glass and metal on the floor, there is no sign of oil. Uses zero lamps. Oh, Tasty Toast wants some rust bucks. Let's go. Okay, let's look at this guy. The Stygian Rat. After this enemy deals damage, place, two horror on, place one horror on it. And if this enemy has at least two horror on it, remove two doom from this enemy, then replace it with the set-aside Stygian Hound. Okay. Uh, if this enemy deals damage, place one horror on it. If this enemy has three or horror on it, flip it. <clears throat> Remove three horror and flip it. 
<clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, we have cold. Cannot leave play. While location has one or more lamps and or attached fiery treachery, it loses the cold trait. Investigators at locations without the cold trait may ignore the effects of cold treacheries. And stygian enemies at cold locations cannot move unless instructed to by a treachery card. Then we got dark. Cannot leave play. While location has one or more lamps and or an attached fire treachery, it loses the dark trait. Investigators at locations of the dark trait may ignore the effects of dark treacheries. Investigators at dark locations cannot discover clues. So we need two clues, and this place is dark. So this uses zero lamps. Can I still put lamps on it? Am I crazy that it didn't actually define what lamps were in the rule book? <clears throat> I am not crazy. Yeah, it just starts with zero. Yeah. I agree. That's how like that's how I look at it. <clears throat> Alright, well let's see what our opening mulligans are, shall we? So we can't discover clues. We cannot discover clues. Let's go, Ash Can Pete. Interesting. We're looking for a weapon here, of course, as all. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I need to do this over. We need allies! Surely Duke would smell the clues, no need for seeing them. Amen. Amen, game designer. All right, so we're actually, uh, call me crazy, but I'm grabbing Rita here. Call me crazy, chat. Well, maybe she'll get abducted. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, this might be the best start I've ever had in this deck. This is incredible! Oh my god. It's very expensive. But it's, like, good? Holy crap. Uh, this, uh, Pete deck is also not that great, but luckily, I mean, like, we have frickin', uh, Duke, so, like, we're always ready to go. I'm gonna do a full mulligan here, though. These, uh, old keyring is interesting, but I think I'm just gonna dig for specifically Ice Picks and Jacob Morrison. Sick. I like this hand a lot more, especially with this uh, unrelenting we just got. Okay, well, let's see what this is. Deep knowledge. So Stygian enemies enter play exhausted. They can already be affected by player cards, be damaged, be engaged, or be moved. <clears throat> uh, well, we're going to have Joe go first. He's going to stand together. And we're going to play Michael Lee and a machete. Okay, 
<clears throat> Let's get some ice picks out. Uh, and then we're going to duke into this location, I think. A simple metal door at the end of the tunnel blocks entrance to the rest of the base. Okay, um, we're gonna, I guess, put two lamps here. I'm gonna discard this to ready Duke. <clears throat> uh, and then I'm gonna play winging it from my discard pile, I think. And I'm gonna commit unrelenting and we're gonna seal, no, sorry, the correct order of actions is we investigate with Duke. We commit the unrelenting here, and we seal the, sorry, we seal the plus one and the zero and the zero. <laughs> All right, Mike, Mike, let's pull, do some detective work. Pulls out machete. It's true. All right, um, and then we're gonna draw two cards. That seems sick. Uh, then we're gonna investigate at five to two. Sweet, we'll grab a clue. Release the tokens. <clears throat> and then for our last action, we're going to winging it, and we're going to go two to one. We're going to go uh, four to one. Minus three. We're good. Grab two clues. <clears throat> Dare I say that turn was pretty all right? That was a good start. Okay, um, I don't have to do anything crazy. This guy does not ready. Should toss an ice pick for the last one too? Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I have no way to get them back yet, so they're just going to continue to be uh, re uh, skill cards for me. My tempo was already incredible. I mean, like, I also could save this last one here for Joe Diamond, because Joe Diamond can still get clues, right? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with how that turn went. Ooh, old key ring. Nice. That's... If only I got rid of one of my frickin' ice picks. <laughs> Alright, evil card here. Uh, I get to ignore this one. We can ignore this one. That's cool. Okay, interesting. Test book three. Oh, this is the one for Joe. We have five to three. Uh, minus three. Well, that's a bit rough. That is admittedly a little bit rough. So now we're going to do the fight test. We have five to three. I'm going to commit this because we want to pass it. And I... <laughs> Can you ignore that one because cold? No, because there's no oil lamp on this location. Sorry, there's no lantern on this location. This location is still dark and cold. Otherwise, that would be really nice. Yeah, Joe Diamond's still hanging out by the entrance. He's looking at this Stygian hound and being like, the, the frick? The frick are you, bud? All right, well, we're going to draw three cards. I'm going to play this. I didn't. Good call, Tasty Toast. We need that to be accurate. Uh, we're going to move here, and we're going to investigate at 6 to 2. Thank you for the clue. Oh, shit, I have to advance this. Let's do that before we move. No, let's get the clue. Just in case, like, it snuffs all my lanterns. Help! Joe! <clears throat> okay. So we will now spend a clue and a clue, and we'll advance this. Super. 
The base is in an odd state. Parts of it have been evacuated in an orderly manner, but other parts seem to have undergone a pitched battle. Furniture is upended and paper records are scattered and frozen to the floor, mostly illegible. Natasha set aside a mysterious figure asset to the generator room. When you enter the generator room, flip this card. That's spooky. Oh, I see. This is just the oil lamp text. Smart. Smart. And a resource on Michael? Yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there, chat. I do appreciate you keeping me... Uh, keeping me in check, though. Dyer still doesn't seem to have got the generator running. You wonder whether he needs any help. When the mysterious figure is flipped, we immediately advance. Spooky? <clears throat> All right, well, we're going to move into this location. We get to ignore this one because it's dark. Okay. More tunnels stretch north to the south across the base, forming a square. A door on the east wall is marked Generator. A large and relatively modern generator dominates this well-built room. Along the east wall are several alcoves, one of which is still stacked with drums of gasoline. All right, chat. From outside the door of the generator room, you hear the sound of voices talking. Only Dyer is in there. Is he talking to himself? Here's my hope. Please be William Dyer. Let's go! Which one's the real William Dyer? That guy's supposed to be here, right? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, let's flip this. Dyer runs up to you. We should leave immediately, he says. There is nothing to be gained in this place. From behind the generator, another man comes staggering out. Don't listen. This thing attacked me. The newcomer is also William Dyer. No, responds the first Dyer. It's an imposter. It's, intim it's imitating me. You look back and forth between them. They are identical in both look and mannerism. Shuffle the two William Dyers without looking at the backs and attach them both to the generator room. While it is Act 3, each William Dyer gains attack him as an action. Deal one damage to this asset, then immediately advance to Act 3B. As an action, you can look for subtle clues to their identities. Uh, parlay, test book 4. If you succeed, immediately advance to Act 3B. Keep this here as a reminder. <clears throat> is there a way to tell them apart? Perhaps attacking one of them will provoke a response. Ignore the unique symbol on William Dyer. Forced. Uh... Oh my god, there are six agenda decks here. This is crazy. <clears throat> when enemies would attack, deal one damage to each William Dyer. Uh, when either William Dyer has damage equal to its health value, we immediately advance. William, William Dyer! Alright, well we can let Joe do this one. Joe can come do that next turn. As for us, we're definitely going to light a fire. Baby, come and light my fire. Shoot both of them. It, you can't do wrong if you shoot both of them. All right, we're going to investigate with Duke. We have five to three. Uh, I'm the greatest gamer that ever existed. Let's go again. <laughs> Five to three. I'm the greatest investigator that ever existed. Remember to shuffle them? Thank you. I'm an elite gamer. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to upkeep. Two of six. I think there's going to be an encounter card that shuffles the dyers. <laughs> Alright, Dookie boy, who smells the least like an elder thing? I mean, the, the dogs and the thing knew. Sorry, this should be here. I gave this to the wrong location. This should be here. Uh, I believe that's when an enemy when enemies would attack. Deal one damage to each William Dyer. 
after you play an asset. Huh. All right, let's move into this location. <clears throat> Um, let's try this out. We have six to four. We'll go seven to four. That beats the skull. Sweet. Uh, we'll do this one, the one on the right. No, no, we'll do the James. You can never trust the one on the left. Advanced Act 3B. Zip. Look at the back of each William Dyer asset and flip the enemy. Exhausted. Oh my god! No! No! Oh, God, is that what we all look like on the inside? So I like that Joe, Joe was like, all right, I'm going to give these guys a quicker look. And then he, like, leaned in. He looked at one William Dyer, and he was like, all right, that looks like the William we came with. And then he just, like, turns slightly to the right, and this thing's looking back at him, and he's like, I don't think that's Will. I don't think that's him. When this enemy enters play, do not remove damage from it. While William Dyer is in play, this enemy loses Hunter and has aloof in patrol. William Dyer, after this enemy deals damage to you, spawn one clue token on it. So this thing has six health. This thing was impersonating Dyer. When enemies would attack, if William Dyer is in play and the Abhorrent Changeling is ready and unengaged at its location, place one damage on William Dyer, then remove him from the game if he has damage equal to his health. When it is defeated, we immediately advance. When Abhorrent Changeling has player clue tokens on it, we immediately advance. Well, we only have but one thing to do, and that is attack. So we're going to fight this thing. This should be gone, by the way. We're going to attack this thing at um, six, six to four. Seven to four. Uh, he'll take one damage. Oh, no, we, sorry, we should have Michael lead that. He'll take two damage. Isn't it aloof? Oh, yeah, 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 no, 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 good call, good call, good call. Give, give me this thing back. Sorry, so while William Dyer is in play, so we can't engage him, that's fine, so we'll just have to put this on um, Ashcan. We could engage him, and then Ashcan can do four damage. <clears throat> can I just kill William Dyer? can engage him. If we engage him, we can't deal the damage. We want him to engage him this turn, next turn. We can kill him next turn pretty much no problem. This guy is, he's kind of soft. We can have Duke bite him twice. We could kill him with the ice picks. Yes, thank you. Good call, because that attack never happened. Get out of here, preposterous sketches, you freaking nerd. Uh, okay, so we're going to, after we play an asset, we're going to emergency cash. Yeah. All right, and then Duke, we're going to engage this guy here. Uh, then we're going to attack him. We have five to four. That's not great. But we're going to go five to four. Minus three, we're at two to four, we can be lucky. 
We can discard this to deal one additional damage, so that'll be three. <clears throat> I'm going to discard old key ring to ready Duke. We're going to bite him again. With this, we're going to commit a resourceful. Ugh! That's not great, is it? Two, so we have four, we have six to four, that's not great. You can commit something. Like one of these surviving knives. Okay, we're eight to four, that's pretty good. Sweet. I'm going to discard this and get the other one back into my hand. He's dead. I'm going to fast out this one again. <clears throat> okay. Melee advance. <clears throat> Wounded, the creature recoils from you. Record in your campaign log that the BFE, in the BFE base camp, you fought off the changeling. Flip the cold treachery and read it. There's too much reading here. I was trying to warn you, the changeling croaks in an inhuman voice. This place belonged to the cysts of darkness. Do not feed them. Do not warm them. Leave them to freeze. Like quicksilver, the thing morphs and squirms past you and out the door. You chase after it, but it is far too quick, and from the entrance you see a petrol soar away into the sky. At least you can get the generating generator on now. Do we want to? If William Dyer is in, uh, attached to set aside generator assets of the generator room. Let's go from top to bottom, left to right, like normal, like uh, normal Canadians do it. <clears throat> um, if William Dyer is in play and an investigator takes control of him, otherwise he slumps down by the generator to bandage himself and rest. Probably on my boy Duke over here, right? On each electric lamp's location. Okay. This should be gone. This. Goes in there. Whatever that thing was, you don't have time to worry about it now. You still need to find out what the Barsmeyer Falcon expedition discovered here in Antarctica and what happened to this base. Only investigators at the offices may spend the records a number of clues as a group, which is six. So we just need two more clues. Where are the offices? There. <clears throat> okay. God, there's still four acts left? Oh my god. There's a lot going on in this scenario. Okay. Um, upkeep. We're at three of six doom. Evil card. Cur uh, caustic Blob. How do they know? That's, a, that's my card. It's me. This When your turn ends, if you're at a cold location, discard this card. Otherwise, take one damage. Interesting. Interesting. Another Caustic Blob, you say? <laughs> hey. Okay, 
Um, this turns pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna spend two actions to get rid of this for Joe. Then we're gonna move down here. When this location is revealed, attach the set aside welded oven asset to it. Say no more. I'll actually say more because I need to know what it is. Spend a resource, spawn one clue on this card. Then, if there are player clues on this card, move all clues from your, from it to your investigator. Oh, interesting. So Joe's going to move in here. We're going to spend a resource to spawn a clue on this card. We might as well. Uh, and then I'm going to play a survival knife in my offhand. And then when your turn ends, this is discarded. We're in a cold location. So we can go to upkeep. Upkeep. Vicious blow is always sick. This goes away. We're at four of six. A dumb rat. Close the location with clues without a copy of this card attached. If you cannot, if attached location has no clues, additional cost to investigate the attached location, you must pay one resource. <clears throat> okay. So I think what we can do is we can spend one of these to put a clue on this location. Then we get to move these clues over here. Let me flip this card. The front of the oven interior is blocked by a rough black surface and it takes you a moment to understand what you're looking at. One of the Stygian creatures was trapped inside and its head is frozen in position, squashed against the steel door. So we would grab a Stygian rat, but because it's already going to have two horror on it, we're going to bring out the Stygian hound instead. Because that's how that would work. It does come in with two horror on it. <clears throat> Guys, I'm a little bit spooked. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit spooked. I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little, my, my, I'm tense. I have a, a very knotted feeling in my chest about this scenario. It's scaring me. We're going to move up here. And then let's advance this. Rat with two horror levels up to hound? Yeah, that's why I have the hound here instead of the rat. Yeah, I just, I just went right for the hound. hound. I didn't even grab the rat. We just went right for the hound. The library is still full of records, but most of the binders are clogged with ice and the paper inside reduced to an inseparable mass. Frozen onto the lid of a box in such a way as to leave it legible, you do, you do discover a record of the flight inventories for the base's final week of operation in 1933. You just know what's going to come here in the atmosphere. That's what makes it so spooky. We know that soon these things are going to wake up when it gets hot enough, and we're going to have a ton of enemies we need to deal with. A ton of enemies we need to deal with. Anyways, at least two dozen men, including Dr. Klaus Falcon, one of the expedition leaders, made outbound flights during the 15th and 16th. Salvage finds were brought back to the base, but all of the men in one of the planes never returned. All of the outbound flights list their destination as a site named Tunnel Entrance. Subsequently, on the 20th, there is a flurry of activity as the, base, as the base is evacuated. No coordinates or other information that would allow you to locate this tunnel entrance are apparent from this record. You take note of the flight numbers and times. Only investigators in the radio room may spend the requisite numbers. I want to stop lighting things. But I suppose we could just, like turn things off as we go, right? We can just live in the dark and the cold. This tunnel entrance site must have been very important for Dr. Falcon to have led the expedition there. You must find a record of where exactly they went if you're going to follow them. Only investigators of the radio room may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. We need six clues. 
<clears throat> okay. Can't you bring the light with you? No, I can take the I can take the light down. This one's just lit though. The radio room is just lit. <laughs> All right, well we're going to move two. And then I'm going to snuff out a lantern. And I'm going to spend an additional resource, sorry, to snuff out the other lamp. I don't, I want it to be dark wherever I can make it dark. I am just too spooked right now. I don't want to be here and I wish I could go home. Would be a bit different if one actually had, yeah, the lantern and the flashlight with supplies on it. I agree, Kunkos, that would be really cool. Very hard to do when you get, I don't like you, but you're actually pretty soft because we have all the assets we want out. Do you ever just feel like you're on the edge of it all becoming a nightmare? Do you guys just, do you feel it? Do you, you feel it, right? It's in your bones. All right, we're going to spend two actions to get out of this location because it do be dark. Uh, then we're going to spend uh, a lightning bolt to put some lanterns in this room. We're going to work a hunch and grab a clue. Um, and then we're going to investigate at 6 to 1. Ashcan's going to move into this location. He's going to spend an action and a resource to snuff out both lanterns. I'm scared. You can see it in my bones. And then we're going to move into this location. It's okay. It's just a game, Justin. There's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be scared of, even though the Doom agenda is about to flip. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. Don't be scared. Let's go to upkeep. That deduction's huge. That uh, Professor Henry Armitage can actually be pretty okay. All right, let's see what happens, shall we? <clears throat> from partial records written in German you learn that artifacts recovered elsewhere in Antarctica were received by the base for analysis including a number of small black onyx like gems the stones were recovered from a nearby site referred to as the tunnel entrance on December 16th 1933 four days later the base was abandoned another damaged document describes the Stygian creatures ambulatory specimens appear to mimic ingested material after paper and board, tree-like limbs developed. After dog, quadruple form developed. After human... Attacha set aside fire treachery to the dog tunnels. <clears throat> Ready each Stygian enemy. Stygian. Stygian? I think maybe both are right. Shuffle all the set-aside copies of Fire, Repungent, Lurching, and Loathsome Call in the encounter discard pile into the deck. I'm going to wager that this fire makes the room pretty bright. What do you guys think, chat? You think that's accurate? Oh, okay, we can put the fire out. Good flavor. Good flavor. Okay. The warmth of the lamps is enlivening them. Stygian enemies have hunter as long as there is an investigator at their location or a connecting location. Sorry, you should be with me. When the round ends, at each location where there are multiple ready Stygian enemies, set aside out of play all but one with the highest fight value. Place horror tokens... Sorry. 
We're going to take that again. When the round ends, at each location where there are multiple ready Stygian enemies set aside out of play, all but the one with the highest fight value. Place horror tokens on the remaining enemy equal to the total fight values of, all of the set-aside enemies, plus all the horror tokens on the set-aside enemies. Place horror tokens on the remaining enemy equal to the total fight values of the set-aside enemies, plus all the horror. So with these ones... So with this one, two horror tokens would be on it, right? This would be two horror tokens, because it would be it would remove this guy, and he would have two. However, if this guy had one horror token on it, it would be three horror tokens on it, right? That's correct. I think that's right. Okay, well, let's see our evil card, shall we? Blob! Loathsome Call. Find the ready Stygian enemy and play with the highest fight value that is not your location. Test Brain X, where X is that enemy's fight value. If you fail, take one horror and move to that enemy's location. Oh, that's not good! <laughs> that's not good at all! Well, we're testing two to three. I think I'm going to go four to three and hope we draw a minus one here. Because that's all we can do. Oh, so sick. That's huge. That's huge. That would have been really bad. All right, let's see what our hunch is. <laughs> Fucking scene of the crime. Okay. Well, I mean, I think we go for the hit here, right? We have four, five, six, seven to three. That's not good. What an unexpected twist. <laughs> what an unexpected twist. So within or inexorable, we remove all damage from it, right? Oh, I think you said remove horror before you flip it. Remove three horror from it and flip it. Thank you, Complex. That saved my day. Oh, frick, I just closed the Betrayal Campaign Guide. Yeah, Love Out seems to morph even more, yeah. Yeah, these things can be pretty spicy, but I think we can, I think we can still make this work. It's gonna get spooky, like there's no denying that. All right, so with this one, we can actually just punch with the survival knife. Actually, no, we should still hit with the machete just in case we draw a cultist. So we have four, five, six, seven to four. We can go eight to four to beat anything. Cool. We'll move here. Okay, we're going to light. Baby, won't you light my fire? <clears throat> okay, 
So then we're going to investigate here. We're going to use Duke and Ice Pick. And we're going to do two deductions, I think. So we have four, five, six, seven to two. We can actually keep this back. I want to keep this. Yeah, we're going to keep this one back for right now because we're going to use this for our next test. So we because we have no curse tokens in here, we have. Great. Yeah, oh, perfect. Dyer does give me a book. You're right. So we have four, five, six, seven to two. Yeah, we're golden. He's huge. <laughs> He's huge. Okay. We do succeed. So we get a clue from normal. We get a clue from the d -d -d deduction number one. We get a clue from the d -d deduction number two. I'm going to discard this winging it to ready Duke. We're going to investigate again. We have Yeah, okay. We're going to investigate. We have 4, we have 6 to 2. On the best. Grab this clue. And then for our last action, I'm going to spend a resource to snuff out the light here. <clears throat> our turn ends. We're at a cold location, so we'll discard this card. And then we're going to go to upkeep. Sorry! No, when the round ends, we're going to go to upkeep. This guy moves here. And then this thing goes into four, so we're going to remove one of it, and he turns into this guy. Super creepy. The mood on this scenario is pretty sick. <clears throat> okay. We're at one of ten. draw a card okay not the blob get this caustic blob out of here okay sorry we need a new one of these that's sick that's sick. Uh, I think we want us to go first, and we're going to give uh, Judo, uh, Ashcan three cards. Frick! <laughs> Frick! <laughs> I mean, that's, that's totally okay. We're going to move in here. Well, I suppose we're going to investigate. <clears throat> so we have four, five, six. Six to three. I'll commit this. We'll go eight to three. Yay! Okay, that's me. So I believe the correct line is we get rid of this Racked by Nightmares. We discard this Glimmer of Hope to Ready Duke. And then we move in here and we investigate. And we have four, we have five to three. Five to three. I was hoping to fail game, but I mean, I'll take it. I was hoping to fail and do some things with this, but that's okay. That's okay. 
Uh, and then we'll spend the clues to advance this. I can get rid of five. Actually, we probably want to... I like Pete being the cluever on his own. And Joe can just get some clues when he can. So we'll spend all of Joe's. Stacks of neatly filed papers fill the radio room, but as in the library, most of them are illegible and useless. After some searching, you find a transcript that had fallen beside a desk and frozen to the wall. Dated December 7th, it details a radio conversation between Joseph Barsmeyer, one of the expedition leaders and the pilot of a reconnaissance flight. The pilot reports discovering the statue, spooky, with the implication that they were search specifically searching for it. This news is met with some excitement, followed by disappointment in the news that the statue is almost entirely buried in the snow. The pilot also notes that in the rough vicinity of the statue, his radio did not function correctly, and he was unable to make contact. No location for the statue is specified in the transcript, tra transcript uh, and no indication is given of what the statue is, why the Germans would be looking for it, and in, or indeed how a statue could exist in Antarctica in the first place. Where to next? You still need to find something like a set of coordinates for the tunnel entrance site. Failing that, perhaps you can learn something more about the statue that was mentioned. Only investigators in the barracks. Um, sorry, this guy should be gone. Is it okay if we don't go into the barracks? Is it okay if we just don't go into the barracks and say we did? Do you think that's okay, game? Something found like a set of coordinates for the tunnel entrance site. Failing that, perhaps you can learn something more about the statue that was mentioned. Only investigators in the barracks may spend it. Can we not and just say we did? With clues, without a copy of this, that is our location. Let's pay a resource, sure. So we can just ignore this one because it is dark. And because it is no longer dark. Okay, let's see what our hunch is. <laughs> oh, perfect timing for it. Actually, TBH, this is like legit, le like perfect timing. Okay, well, we're gonna probably spend two clues to get rid of this. Sorry, two resources to get rid of this. Uh, I'm gonna investigate and I am gonna practice makes perfect spending another resource because of the deep dark, deeper darker. I am gonna play the deduction, I suppose. So we have four I like my reaction to deduction there. I suppose I'll play it. We have four, five, six, seven to three. Sweet. We'll grab two clues. And we'll place an evidence on you. This goes into our hand. Uh, and then we're going to move down here for our last action. No! I don't like you. <laughs> Sorry, you should be standing up, brother. Ah, uh, that's fine, though. Let me discard this. Does the horror go away when it converts to a town? Oh, my god, it does. I played this one wrong. That guy should not have transformed so early. The guy up here actually should have stayed a hound. Thank you, Dice Gods. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Ashcan. 
Oh, sorry, during this lightning bolt, we have this window here. One, two, three, four, four. Uh, during this lightning bolt, we're going to light some lanterns. We're going to play Jacob Morrison to start things off. Uh, then we're going to stand up. Then we're going to duke into this location. So we have four. We can go five to three. Actually, you know what? We're going to go four to three. We're banking on a look what I found here. Boop! Minus four. So four minus four is zero, but this is if you fail by three or less. So I'm gonna play it. We'll grab two clues. Uh, I'm gonna never do what I do. Oh wait, no, 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 do what I do. We're gonna pay one to grab two glimmers of hope back from our discard pile. Oh, wait, no, don't do what I do. We're going to discard this to ready Duke. <laughs> don't do what I do. Uh, then we're going to play Duke and commit this deduction to it. So we have five to three. Six to three. Okay. So we do pass. And we do get these two clues. This and this should be gone. And then that is me. All right, this guy's going to attack me, but we're going to exhaust the survival knife and Michael Lee spending an evidence to attack back. So before he gets to attack me. So we have four... Five, six, seven, eight to three. Cool. This thing will die. <sighs> Alright, upkeep. Does he lose horror when he dies? I do not believe so. Let's go back to the inexorable. Now we just removed damage, it looks like. Three of ten. We'll choose this one. <laughs> We're testing four to four. I think I'm okay with failing this, because we have to get there anyway, right? And we could... who he has four evade, huh? We could try to evade him. Because we have to go there anyway. I think that is the plan. That's just free movement, baby. Alright, we're testing six to three. You're going to turn big, and that's okay. You're a big boy. Okay, we can spend six of our clues. It is six, right? Yeah. The barracks are largely empty, but a few personal effects have been left here and there. Inside a locked metal trunk, you find a small notebook free of ice and filled with haphazard notes and doodles. You skip past sketches of mountains and penguins, looking for anything of value. A curious picture depicts what appears to be an abstract or featureless human head protruding from the snow. You wonder if this could be the statue referred to in the radio transcript. Flipping to the back of the book, you discover the last page has a list of coordinates. The main camp, a smaller camp near the sea, several supply caches dotted around the continent, and the tunnel entrance. Meanwhile, the gasoline has finally run dry and the electrical supply dies from across the base. From the top of the generator, a dark shape you had mistaken for a shadow reaches down, searching for new sources of heat. Flip the generator. 
Hello? <laughs> Remove all lamps from each electric lamp location. Done. Say literally no more. We have fire. Sorry, this. Fire and attach to the generator room. Okay. Whatever the BFE found, whatever it is the uh, uh, taco came here to recover, you have the coordinates. Time to go. The massive creature in the generator room emits a hideous wailing screech that you hear with your mind rather than your ears. Each Stygian enemy gains patrol. Stygian abomination. When the scenario ends, if the Stygian abomination is at a cold location, place it in the victory display. Okay. This guy. Massive, inexorable, cannot move. After this enemy deals damage, place one horror on it. Well, I think it's just time to go, right? I do like that this this would be a perfect time for a frickin' this thing isn't even elite TBH. This would have been a perfect time for a fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh, that would be sick. Just get rid of frickin' everything. So yeah, in order to get it in the victory display. Only if I want it in the victory display. But I just need to get out. So I think that's honestly my goal. We're just going to try to get out. So we're going to try to evade this guy. We're going to do the unrelenting. And we're going to seal... Minus four. Skull, skull. So we're testing at three to four. We're testing at four to four. Four to four on this guy. Four to four. Uh, I will use a Lucky and a Jacob Morrison to pass it. Uh, then Ash Campete's going to move over here. Joe is going to start by putting out the fire and lamps here. And then he's going to move up here. I th think this guy this guy doesn't move because it's cold. Stygian enemies at cold locations cannot move except unless instructed by a treachery card. Okay. And this guy goes like this. This guy stands up. This guy gets eaten by this guy. The ball, the, the Stygian mass come together. Right now. Boom, okay. You, you guys know. You guys get it. Let's go upkeep. Ooh, that's a great draw, actually. I don't want bullets on my gun. And I definitely don't want resource tokens in my discard pile. 
Ooh, but think of the design space. Resource tokens in my discard pile? What can we do with that? All right, we're at four of 10. We're going to first watch this. <laughs> Seems easy. Um, we're going to test six to four. No. All right, we want to pass this one, so we're going to commit this. Because that puts us up to eight to four. That also works. Give me this, please. I didn't even re reveal something, did I? We're just right now focused pretty heavily. Oh, no, it's because I haven't done it yet. Okay. Investigation phase. Soup. Cryptic research. We don't need that. Joe's honestly... Ash can. Ash can. One, two... Joe is going to move into here and he's going to resign. Uh, we'll then go to... This guy's location is cold. He does not move. We go to upkeep. Hey, perfect timing. 5 of 10. Evil card over here. Sure. We're going to just move into this location and we're going to resign. You never thought the bleak, lifeless, unending Antarctic wilderness could seem so welcoming. Resolution number two. Sorry, I'm in my, uh, the... Soup. With the coordinates in hand, you flee the BFE base and return to your aeroplane. Whatever this tunnel site is, it's close at hand now. You board the plane and set off in that direction. Record in your campaign log that we discovered the location of the tunnel entrance. We get victory X, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I guess I should have revealed this location. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So sick. Read. Proceed to resolution three. Oh my god, that's a lot of reading. Okay, and an interlude. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. The site is a few hours' flight almost directly south. On the journey, you discuss the Stygian creatures and what you learned about them with Dyer. They are not, you agree, Shuggaths, although there is some faint resemblance in their elastic qualities. Though you are not on the other side of a vast continent from Dyer's alien city, you cannot shake the feeling that they are related somehow. As for that thing that impersonated me, says Dyer, that one did uncannily resemble a Shoggoth in both its sheen and its movement. Uh... If they have learned to walk and act like men, what does this mean for our world? All the more reason to contain this threat at the source, if we can. It seems we have two enemies, three if you include our erstwhile taco compatriots. I feared the, I feared the Elder Ones and their slaves had reconciled after Boston, but the assassin on the ship seemed hostile still. Perhaps we can turn this en enmity to our advantage somehow. Dio reaches for his bulging back and withdraws the huge mythos tome. Oh, pack, not back. Uh, and withdraws the huge mythos tome you spied there before. To your surprise, you realize it is the Necronomicon, the very same translation that ought to be under careful guard in the Orn Library. The very same tome that led to the troubles in Dunwich not ten years prior. I assume we would have need of it, he says with forced ease, then bends over to study it. Most of the rest of the first pa flight passes in silence, but a mountain range starts to rise ahead of you in the distance. Dyer suddenly begins reading from the cramped and barely legible text. I tell you of the elder things, the ancient, the clever, the godless. Ever are these imp imp impious wretches found in their temples. What use have the godless for temples? Not worshipping, never worshipping, but scheming and plotting to steal the primal white jelly that is the very children of the gods they hate. 
from Enki the gatekeeper, and from Tiamat the mother of a thousand serpents, and from all the Anunnaki they steal, but the theft will be their undoing. I tell you of Abzu, the original, the internal, the undying, the vast and formless ocean which birthed forth Enki and Tiamat. On hellish day when Abzu's eyes fall upon the earth, this earth, the godless will bring it, the elder folly, into the black pit with the cavern rim, how it longs, how it hungers. From within the nameless cylinder it watches with eyes of darkness. No vessel can contain it, it spills forth, its waters cover the land and all is darkness. You recall the ancient texts link Enki with Yog sothoth and Tiamat with Shub, Shubby. But outside of the Mesopotamian mythology, you, can, you cannot recall any other references to Abzu. You ponder the possible meaning of the prophecy. Is this what the aliens are plotting to summon this Abzu? Proceed to interlude 4, the impossible pit. Uh, so sick. I just want to say before I get on to this one. Uh, this scenario has probably been my favorite custom scenario that I've played. It's incredible. The mood was awesome. I was legitimately scared. There was a lot of strategy that I was able to use to take advantage of these enemies. Uh, them evading for a turn, like for a whole like two, like when you kill them, they, they're dead for two turns, is really nice. I can see with how dice gods, if you can get like really, like, you can get into a very sticky situation, which might definitely change my opinion on this one, but I really like this campaign. I want to see what this dog site is. Yeah, we didn't need to go there. So sick. I had a great time with that scenario. Like I said, I think it's been my favorite custom scenario I've played. I dug the hell out of it. Okay, we got to uh, quickly... Quickly read this other interlude. The coordinates of Falcon's tunnel site lie at a point where the ice shelf meets an unexplored mountain range, about 300 miles inland. What you find there is somewhat surprising, though. An immense semicircular pit or hole in the ice shelf, perhaps a mile across and as much as 600 feet deep with sloping sides. To its southern side, the pit has revealed a rocky cliff face of dark worn stone, at the base of which is what looks to all the world like a beach of white sands. The curving northern edge of the pit floor is open water, teeming with seals and penguins. Where the beach meets the cliff face in more or less the exact center is clearly artificial is a clearly artificial rectangular structure, looking somewhat like a gateway, with a dark opening leading into the mountainside. A few hundred yards before it, where the beach meets the water, stands a gigantic statue of a humanoid figure, apparently carved from black stone. Incongruously, the wreckage of a plane, a junker's model similar to the very one you are flying, lies upside down on the beach near the statue. There is no sign of a crash, but even from this distance, you can clearly see that the body has started rusting. It must have been lying here for some time. Check the campaign log if we follow through the tunnel. No. The rocky beach doesn't look safe for a landing, so you put down on the snow west of the pit and hike over to it. As you approach the lip, you find the slope sides of the pit are still in the process of slowly melting. Scrambling and slipping down, the temperature rapidly increases until it is quite uncomfortable in your heavy winter gear. The beach is not white sand after all. A thick layer of something that strongly resembles damp, mushy ash lies over a bed of dark pebbles. As you hike towards the statue, the, citriate, the, the striation in the ash, where it hasn't been disturbed by the passage of penguins, tells of ice that melted and ran down into the sea. The statue is humanoid, if not exactly human. It looks quite abstract, perhaps a symbolic representation of a human rather than a literal depiction of some monster. The mushy ash covers the pits and creases of the statue, giving the impression that it once covered it, but has since washed away. A sound from the water draws your attention. The seals and penguins are all rushing away towards the edges, as something massive starts to rise from the pool. You take cover behind the statue's base and watch carefully as a huge metal vehicle of some kind pushes out of the water and partially up onto the rocks, looking bizarrely like a beached whale. The front of the submarine craft hinges open and from within a strange procession emerges. At the front of it is one of the aliens, the five-pointed star of its head clearly visible in the bright sun. Behind it comes humans pushing a sort of large cart that looks like a huge suit rack. 
There are two of these racks, each carrying maybe a dozen large hanging bags on their frames. Bringing up the rear are several more aliens, visibly smaller than the one at the front, although still towering over the humans. After the whole entourage leaves the ship, the front closes back up and it recedes back into the water again. The aliens advance up the beach and on the other side of the statue from you towards the stone gateway. As they pass by, you can clearly see that the bags hanging from the frames are human bodies, sealed by some bizarre process inside a shimmering material that clings tightly to their forms. The procession moves past you and passes under the great stone archway and into the blackness beyond. The seals and penguins cautiously move back to the water, and before long, the, the pit is filled again with their raucous racket. Yuck, 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 yuck. You move carefully up to examine the dark stone archway. It looks ancient, and Dyer rushes over to examine it. As he does so, you check inside for threats, but you can see or hear no sign of the alien party. This is Cambrian slate, maybe 500 million years old. From the architectural style, this was definitely created by the city builders around the height of their civilization. We are nearly 2,000 miles from where I explored. Is this another city from the same period? I remember there being what I thought was a settlement marked somewhere around here, but I got the impression it was underwater. Just as he finishes, a blast of hot air emerges from the tunnel entrance, continues for several minutes, and then fades. The cause of the pit around you is suddenly very evident. You don't see that you have any other option than to pursue the alien party into the dark. Oh my god, okay. Advancing cautiously through the gateway, you find yourself in a huge tunnel that heads into the mountain. The walls and floor are clearly natural stone, although cut with great precision and smoothness and wet with moisture. The air itself is heavy, warm, and damp, and you are stuck, you are struck with the unnerving sensation that you're venturing into the mouth of some great serpent. Down the center of the tunnel, the floor is so heavily worn by foot traffic that a deep channel is formed with a trickle of water running down it. Inside it, completely it's inside it is completely black, and a few yards in from the entrance, you must rely on flashlights to make your way forward. Further along the tunnel, the right wall opens onto a tall room a few meters wide. It contains, somewhat unexpectedly, a collection of decorated spears and aboriginal garb. You're no expert, but they put you in mind of the peoples of the Pacific Islands, perhaps the Tongan or the Maori. The clothing items look like heavy coats or ponchos and have partly rotted in the damp air. Uh, as you emerge from the room, another blast of hot air fills the tunnel, accompanied by a distant howling or rumbling from up ahead. Although not actually painful, it is intensely uncomfortable, especially in your heavy furs, which you remove and tie carefully to the supply sled. It is a good four or five minutes before the air dies down and the tunnel is silent once more. Finally! The tunnel opens out onto what resembles to nothing so much as a wharf or train station platform. The edge of the wharf lies along the open side of another tunnel, and this one larger and with angled walls and ceiling. Lined up in the tunnel along the wharf's edge are several large platforms like huge pentagonal stone flatbed train cars. Upon inspection, they appear to be suspended by nothing, floating silent and immobile. Looking down into the tunnel you see floor, you see odd items scattered there, all of metal, a belt buckle here, several bullet casings there, clear evidence of the Stygian animals from the base camp that absorb all organic matter into themselves, but leave behind the mineral. This warm environment is perfect for beings that seem attracted to it, even animated by heat. Is this the resting place of the 26 men who came here from the Barsmeyer Falcon base? Whew! So yeah, no, that, I think the, the writing in this is obviously really good. The, the 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 creator of this has a definite skill when it comes to prose. I don't mind them being long because I never read them after, and I, I like the story that this is painting. But yeah, it is a lot to read, but I enjoy reading it. It is written very well. That's the end of this one. Thank you guys so much. A quick special shout out to our patrons for supporting the channel. It means the world to me and also to you know everyone who. <laughs> everyone here playing board games who has allowed us to make much better content and focused content since its creation in September. And I'm hoping that it keeps going and keeps growing. So if you're interested in supporting the channel uh, and getting some cool uh, exclusives and perks in the process, go down in the video description to find our Patreon link. Have a good one. Oh my God, I have a spelling error. CH, check the description for a link. It's so big. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.